Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome again to another painting tutorial. So yesterday I did a painting tutorial and today I decided to paint another one because I'm just motivated to do a lot more paintings and I decided to paint one of my favorite subjects. You know, I have a lot of favorite subjects, but I think this one is my favorite forever. Like I can do this forever. I can do this every single day. So we'll be painting a rainy day painting or a rainy day scene. And this is one of my favorites and one of my masterpieces when it comes to series. When I do rain, rainy day paintings, um, I never hated them. I always love them, all right? So here are the colors that I'll be using for today's rainy day painting tutorial. We have burnt sienna, cadmium yellow, titanium white. Um, this is permanent green, deep, and black. So uh, you can see that all the colors are very earthy um, because everything will be neutral today. And I'm just so excited to begin this. Let's start. So I'm going to sketch first the subject just to show you where things are going to go. Um, everything will be abstractish, but in uh, the whole picture, I mean, after you look at the whole picture, it will make sense. So just expect that there will be a lot of um, uh, like things that are not making sense during the initial stage of the painting process. But don't get frustrated. Don't get discouraged. That is just the process of painting a rainy day scene. It usually is because of the distortion of images, all right? So I'm using a 12 by 16 canvas paper. So let's begin now. As I told you, I'll be sketching first the subject. And for the sketch, I'll be using black. So I'm going to get my black. And I'm, we'll be painting a road scene, okay? So this, we will also be doing a lot of perspective here. Okay, just like that. First line. Again, it's okay that the line is not straight because the image will be distorted. Okay, it's like looking through a glass window. All right, just like that. Again, get your black. And I want you to darken this corner. And just darken it, okay? just like this, just to begin with, with something. All right. And now I'll be getting my larger brush because we want to gray this larger area here. Again, we'll be painting a road. So this will be the sidewalk, okay? So we'll be getting, or I'll be getting my larger brush just to get wider coverage in one stroke. Okay, so I'm going to use this brush. I'm going to get my black and white just to gray things a bit. Okay. And start graying the background. This is just the underpainting, but since it's a rainy day scene, we want to make sure that the background is more gray than bright white, okay? For sure, there will be some highlighted areas later, but that would be later. For now, let's just do some gray color as the background color. Mm 
<laughs> like that. And I don't know if you want to relayer it so that your painting is more solid. You can do that. Um, you can do that. I actually want to do that for my own painting because I want the background to be really, really solid. Okay, so I'm just going to relayer it. Just to make sure that it's solid gray so that when we do some more um, detailing here um, the colors will be um, more what do you call that more prominent all right okay i think this is okay for the background, you know, I don't want to layer too thickly simply because the drying time would um, uh, eat our time for tutorial purposes. Okay, all right. Now I'm gonna wait maybe a minute. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna wash my brush out and then I'm gonna switch to another brush. Let's create some abstract details okay so i'm just gonna switch to the brush that i used earlier when i did this part so i'm gonna mix my black and green and we want to do this to suggest oh sorry black and green but i dab onto my white my goodness okay, i'm gonna get my green and black make sure you don't get white by accident because the white color will just simply change the the darkness of your paint so i'm using a combination of black and green you could have actually used black but we don't want that super dark color of the black color because we're painting silhouettes of trees and we still want to make sure that they look a little bit of on the greeny side okay so I'm going to use this dark green, very dark green color to get some shapes right here. So these are just short dabs that will suggest some trees in the background. Okay, the background color is still wet. That's why... Um, I suggest that you wait, you wait a little longer for the paints to dry. Okay, I'm going to add more black simply because uh, the white is overpowering my colors. And just dab the more too much gonna use some black as well and just dab okay I'm gonna use my black right here and some greens the background this background could be anything it could be house it could be trees it could be buildings. It could be anything. It's the possibilities are endless. I forgot to mention that I'll be using a little bit of purpley colors. Okay. So I'm just, okay, these are the trees.
Okay, some black. Okay, just like that. And let me just fix this part. Okay, so I'm just going to get my purple. Uh huh. So, where is my purple? Should be here. There you go. So, I'm just going to get my violet. Okay. Squeeze a tiny bit. Tiny bit of violet. Okay, now I'm going to get my violet. Plus tiny, tiny bit of white. Just to make sure that the violet is seen. But as you can see here, I did not wash my brush. It still got some black paint. And we want that. We want that combination. Just want a little bit of violet. Again, this could be anything, a building. And okay, and then black. I know that it doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> this is what I like about um, rainy day paintings. They don't make sense at all. But once you're done, it will. I mean, it does make sense. So we're going to do the lane, highway lane, or road. Should be a little bit of slanted. Okay. Okay, we can add some. Markings. Right here. Okay, just like that. I really like rainy day paintings. They don't stress me out. <laughs> you don't have to be too detailed. You just have to be um, skilled, okay, when it comes to doing the technique i i just love it i appreciate that okay i'm gonna get some tiny bit of gray not too gray but maybe this gray i'm gonna use that to gray some areas
and then some black. Some distorted images. And I'm going to gray this. I'm going to gray this area a bit. Okay. And black. You can tell that this is just mark making, but um, when you really, really look at it, really day paintings are abstract, you know? However, the difference between the abstract that is intentionally done to be abstract, it's subjective. It really depends on how a person looks at it. But when it comes to rainy day paintings, even if it's abstractish, it makes sense when you're done. Like, it could be no other thing but a rainy day painting. And like abstracts, you have to really interpret it, give it some sort of interpretation that may or may not be true. Sometimes it is associated with the feelings of the artist. I really don't believe that because, um, <laughs> you know, sometimes I can paint a sad painting while I'm happy. So it doesn't really reflect how I feel during that day. And besides, uh, as I mentioned before in one of my videos, if I want to say something, I can simply say it. I don't have to uh, go through a painting process just to express how I feel. That's why I enjoy my painting so much. I don't need, my feelings are totally independent from how I, I paint, okay? Of course, there are times when you can sense that I'm already tired, the painting looks like, um, looks like um, uh, done by a tired person, <laughs> like no more energy, right? But it doesn't have anything to do with how I feel. I try to separate my feelings from the way I do my paintings. Because that would be a total disaster. Imagine if you are experiencing something bad and you cannot paint anything simply because of that. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's just my opinion. And that's just my experience is how I do things. So I'm going to apply more violet colors. Let's go back to the painting. You know, it's... Not always, all the time that I speak about painting styles and there's no, uh, I'm not against abstract painters. It's just that I will not be the person who will do that. Okay, let's grab some green and make, sh make sure that it's mixed with black. But this time, let's make the green more obvious. So we are not going to darken it too much. So we're going to apply green. Right here. Okay, that's too dark. Apply some more green. And also, we can apply a little bit of greeny colors in between the suggestions of leaves. I'm going to mix my green with white. And also here. All right. This is exciting, right? This is exciting because you don't know what will happen here. I like it. I'm going to draw, draw some post. That suggestion of po post. Okay. Okay, and some gray. But I'm going to get my burnt sienna, mix it with black, and I'm going to apply a little bit of burnt sienna right here. And then some black. Mm 
Right, right. How abstractish this could, you know, this could be. I like it. All right. Now I'm going to get my yellow. This is really great. I like it, even if it's just abstract. <laughs> and I'm going to get my yellow. And although I washed my brush, I'm going to mix it with a little bit of brown. Make sure that yellow is the more dominant color. And I'm going to apply. I'm going to color or I'm going to draw. Sorry, I'm going to draw like a line. A diagonal line, just like this, okay, just like that. This will be the sidewalk. I'm going to mix it with brown. Okay, I'm going to do some, like you, uh, the road, um, what do you call this? The road barriers, sidewalk bar barriers. Right, like that. Okay. Okay. Gonna apply a tiny bit of browns. All right, and then I'm gonna get my black. I'm just gonna close this area. You don't wanna see that anymore. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, make it a little straight. by fixing it let's fix the shape okay i'm gonna make some more markings right here We're just using black. Try to mark. Make some dark markings here and there. Now that the paint is somehow dry, we can layer it with some dark colors. Okay, like that. And using some gray color, it's just gray a bit. Mm -hmm. It's too white. Gray, some area, some areas. Okay, highlighting it. Okay, like that.
Okay, I'm going to wash my brush out. So now let's grab some pure white. This subject is quite easy. I'm going to grab my pure white and I'm just going to spread some bright colors on certain areas. Not on every area, but on certain areas only. And I'm going to make some overlapping markings. Just to blur, you know, just to blur a bit. Some areas like this. Okay, it's just a technique. It's very easy, in all honesty. Okay. Very easy. Okay, like that. And let's go down right here. So... We're highlighting some areas on the road or on the pathway um, and also blurring some areas by making some overlapping um, markings. Okay, like that, overlap. We are actually blurring it. Okay. Like this. Now, don't worry if you're scrubbing against your canvas very hardly. You know, I really don't worry too much about my paint brushes. For me, it's their job to, to make me create a painting. I know it's my job to take care of them, but um, making the painting is a priority. I'm going to get some, brush, some light gray color. Some people are just so scared to use their brushes because they will ruin it. I mean, what are you, a, a brush collector or something? I mean, you are a painter. You are supposed to paint. You are supposed to ruin your, your paint brushes because you're creating. Okay, I'm ranting. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Because I just want to uh, encourage everyone to not be afraid to just paint. I mean, I bought... A lot of paint brushes however i don't buy often because while my brushes are while it's true that my brushes are getting ruined by constant hues they're still with me i mean i can still make use of them i know that brushes are expensive okay and i definitely understand that some people are just too protective but um in general, okay, you are supposed to use your paint brushes. And no matter how careful you are, they will get worn out, okay, no matter what you do. So you might as well use them now. I'm going to get some more black. Let's make some gray colors. Okay. 
Okay, I really like this one. <laughs> For some reason, I do like it. And I really like rainy day paintings, but I think I'm going to like this one. Let's create some suggestion of trees over here. Right, like this. I'm going to open this area a bit to suggest the shape of the tree right here. So that it's not, okay, just like that. Okay, and I'm going to apply a little bit of gray color right here. It's not too much, but um, somehow. It should be there somehow. Now we want to blur the lines. We want to blur the lines. Okay, just gonna wait for this to dry. I'm gonna get again my violet. Okay, and it's mixed with black so that I can darken some areas. Right, like that. I'm going to get another brush. I'm going to dab onto my white. Okay, maybe not white. That's too much. I'm going to dab onto my light gray. Okay, like that. Some white. I am so tempted to just use my hands. I cannot uh, afford to not use my hands when I'm painting a rainy day painting. I just have to do it. Okay. I'm going to get some more black for detailing. Okay, like that. Okay, we want to gray some areas as well. Right here. Try to gray it. Some brown and black. Okay, like that. Remember the post that we did? It got painted over, so I'm just going to re re redo it. Like that. And also some greens. The greens have, have lost it.
Okay, just like that. It's going to use some black right here. And some white. Mm -hmm. That's too much, too much white. Okay, let me check. All right, it's really, really abstractish. I love it. This is exactly what we want. Okay, now I'm going to switch brush. I'm going to dab onto my gray color. Okay, and we have this gray color. We're going to go in between the lines so that we blur it. Okay. We're simply blurring it. Okay, like that. Okay, now, okay, it's really abstractish. Okay, now we're going to make some, we're going to, what do you call this, glaze over this area, okay, making it more blurry. And for that, we're going to wait a little bit to make sure that it's dry and that it's okay for us to layer over it. And for the layering, okay, we'll be using white. I'm going to get my white. Make sure that when you do your white, it's watered down, okay? And you add a, a little bit of black just to make it more gray. Okay, and make sure again that it's super watered down. And let's begin glazing the area, making it more, more blurry. Okay, I want to make sure. Everything is blurry in the background. Okay, like this. And then I want you to get a piece of cloth or tissue paper. Just wipe over your painting. Wipe it. Okay, just like that. Everything is blurry now. And then let's go back to black.
darkening some areas. Okay. It's very, very blurry. Okay. Now I'm going to get that to my yellow. And brown. Like that. Okay. Nice. I'm really enjoying this one. You can tell I'm enjoying this.
And now let's do some raindrops. I'll be using small brushes for the raindrops. We'll be doing different sizes. I'll be getting my black again. Black. So we're going to do some big ones first. Okay. This will require patience and um, also your, uh, what do you call this, time. <laughs> So we're going to apply some shadow. Just draw tiny bits of markings. Okay, I need more black. Right. Okay. I'm going to get my white. Now let's create some little dots, okay, of white, like this. Water it down. Okay. Mm
I'm gonna use a tiny bit of gray. And I'm gonna make some splatters. And then using black, we're going to add some shadows to some droplets. So just outline it like that. And we're also going to make some tiny splatters of black or grays. Okay. I don't want to miss that part. Right. Just outline it.
By outlining it, you provide shadow. I'm going to add some gray droplets. Just dab. Let's check. Okay, I'm going to use my black to create some more black and green. To create some more suggestions of trees. Okay, now we're going to splatter. For the splatter, I'm just going to use my fan brush. I'm going to dab onto my white, and it doesn't matter if it mixes with other black and other colors on our palette. It doesn't matter. Just be careful to do this step. In doing this step, I mean.
going to get white. And I'm going to brighten some areas. Let's just brighten some areas. You know, that we see. Let me check. Wow, I like it. I I honestly like it. Let's just blur some areas. And add some detailing. Okay, let's gray this a bit. Let's just create more, more droplets. Maybe more shadowing.
some purple. So I'm actually just to be applying some colors that that's that got painted uh, that this got painted over. Oh my god! I can't talk again. And some greens. Because I think we already forgot the green a little bit. Okay. A little bit of green. And also here, a little bit of green. Yeah, I'm just gonna tap using some black and green so that we fill in the spaces, okay? Some spaces right here. Okay, great. We want to blur this area. Wow, this is nice. Don't you think so? This is nice. Okay, again, we want to make sure that this area is brighter. This area, there is more light here. Okay. Okay. 
Of course, we want to blur some areas. This is actually nice. Mm -hmm. And some blurring. Yes, blur. I want to blur this. So we want to blur some areas, okay? To really suggest um, image distortion. Okay, so I think this is good. Okay, so I'm going to sign this now. And say right here. Okay, and we're finished. We're finished. So I hope you enjoy that one. And I hope you paint along with me. And this is quite different from my usual ones as well. So see you in my next one and have a great day. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Love you.